Hello and welcome to another On The Hook video. Today I'm here at the Old Berry Hill Fisheries and I'm targeting some of the large bream that this venue is renowned for. So before we get stuck in, let me take you through some of the steps that I take to get the best from fishing venues like Old Berry Hill. So the equipment I'll be using today are a matched pair of 12 foot specimen one and three quarter test curve rods with a pair of free spool reels loaded with 10 pound line and 12 pound fluorocarbon leaders on the front. So terminal tackle wise, it couldn't be simpler. I've got a running three inch boom with a standard cage feeder, a stopper bead, 75 mil of twizzled loop boom at the end with a quick neck swivel and then a long four pound hook link with a size 16 hook which we're going to put maggots on when we swap out to sweet corn then we'll change the hook up to a size 14 maybe a size 12 depending on how the session goes so once i've got all the rods all set up the first thing i do is i put a weight equivalent to the weight of the feeder when it's full of ground bait on the end of one of my standoff booms. I then cast about into the lake looking for a smooth bottom. Now we have to remember this lake probably the best part of 150 years old. Lots of silt, lots of debris, lots of detritus from the trees, leaves, branches all on the bottom. Now the carp and the bream when they feed on the bottom of the lake will have a scouring effect. So by Casting the lead out, even with mono, you can fill a smooth bottom as opposed to a bumpy bottom where all the detritus might be. And this bottom is smooth because the fish clear it. Now, if, it, if you found a smooth bottom, that is a, a really good ambushing point to target the fish on. And that's what I'm gonna do first. So I've had a good feel around in the swim I've got. At roughly 70 meters, I've found a nice big clear spot. What I've done now is I'll put the line in the line clip and on the line at the tip eye, I've tied a four turn Grinner elasticated marker knot. This rod is now ready to fish on this spot. I need to transfer this range to the second rod so I can fish both rods on the same spot. And to do that, I'm gonna use wrap sticks. Okay, so I've got a pair of uh, wrap sticks set up in front of me. The wrap sticks are set at a rod length, four yards apart from each other, and they're vertically positioned into the ground. The first thing I'm gonna do is position myself centrally between the sticks. And I use that by simply pointing the rod at the first stick, swinging it without moving my body too much to the second stick. And fortunately, the first time I've done it, I'm central. Now, I take my weight, I position it next to the left post, open the bail arm, hold the line tight, and do figure of eights. That's one. Oh, that's two. Fifteen. There we go, 15 and about a foot when we hit the clip. So now I know the range I've got uh, onto, the, and onto the clear spot out in the lake. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get the second rod and clip that up to the same range. I've got my rods all clipped up to the spot now. What I'm gonna do is introduce a bit of bait and I'm gonna introduce a bait with what's called a bait up feeder. This is a cage feeder that would normally be on the rod. I've simply taken it off and connect it to the end of the three inch boom. What I'm gonna do is introduce 10 bait up feeders of bait. Now I'm gonna introduce bait slightly differently. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast out this bait up feeder six times. And as soon as it hits the clip and hits the surface of the water, I'm gonna empty the feeder by pulling the rod back quickly. What that will do will allow the light airy ground bait to settle in the upper layers of the water and then come down and rest on the top of the silty bottom. Then I'm going to put another four bait up feeders worth in that I'm going to allow the feeder to hit the clip and go right to the bottom of the lake, allow it to settle there for a second or two 
Then I'm going to eject the bait up feeder by pulling the rod back. Once I've got the bait in and on the bottom of the lake, then both rods will be swapped back to cage feeders. We'll put the cage feeders on, load them up with a combination of ground bait, pellets, maggots probably to begin with, maggots and worms on the hook uh, and get them out and see if we can catch some of these famous Old Berry Hill Bream. Double take. Oh no, two fish on at once, what do you do? Oh, I'll have to wait. So, I just cast out a second ago, and before I could even tighten the line up, the rod was away. Now, I think what's happening is, because I've got a long hook link, probably a yard long, the feed is going in, the bream are intercepting the maggots as the maggots are following the feeder down. So this one's a little bit better. Again, just take your time, don't rush this. That's a little bit better. There we go. I'll pop him there just for a second. Grab this one. Fish on, there we go, two at once. So that shows two things. Old Berry Hill is definitely prolific, definitely got a lot of bream in it. And the tactics we're using are absolutely spot on. I've only been fishing probably five minutes and three fish on the bank already. Wow. Right, here we go. One bream in there already. Let's see if there's room for two. There we go. <laughs> two in the net at once, would you believe it? Wow. Now, this bream is covered in bumps. These are spawning tubercles that erupt all over the males when they're getting ready to spawn. And uh, the weather and temperature is just right um, at the moment for these boy boys to be, to be, to be spawning. And this one's a male, and this one, no bumps on it. This one will be a female. So we just take the hook out. Now for filming purposes today, we've been allowed to use a keep net. So uh, we'll put a few of these in the keep net and uh, see how many we catch at the end of the day. So we're 10 minutes in and three fish on the bank already. It looks like we're gonna have an epically busy session. Um, it's carnage here at the moment. Let's get ourselves organized, set the rods back up again, get them back out, see if we can catch some more. Okay, so we've got a big selection of baits here. So right from the off, different colored dumbbells, sweet corn, hemp, different size, pellets, worms, good old classic worms, always good for a bream or two. Some bloodworm to get the essence of bloodworm in the, in the feed. And then to the ground bait, I'll be adding these soft red and tan colored pellets 
maggots for the hook bait, dead maggots for the ground bait, and then the ground bait is a combination of marine halibut, halibut meal and crushed hemp mixed up with lake water. It's nice and soft and fluffy, sticky enough to form a bowl, soft enough to rub back smooth again. This is a banquet for any hungry bream. So the weather's changed a little bit. Hopefully it's just a summer shower. Just had a slightly re-rig up, slightly bigger feeder to help me hit the range. Just every now and again, I couldn't quite get it. The feeders weren't heavy enough. This one, again, only been out a few moments. Just enough time for me to um, step away, grab a drink. Here he comes. You know, it's I've got the slightly bigger feeder on this time. There we go. And another one. Just gently with them. Just take your time. There it is. As she comes. There you go. Two bits of corn. This one couldn't resist it. Slightly bigger feeder. Just give me a little bit more casting weight. Not darker bream this time. But still a bream, target species. So I've been very, very lucky so far to have a fair few bremen in there already. It's not been plain sailing. The weather conditions have changed. We've had bright sun, we've had cloud, we've had a little tiny bit of rain. I've had to change my rigs a few times just to make sure that I keep the bites coming. I've swapped baits about half a dozen times. I've had a, a bream or two on double reds, then on maggots and worm, then a couple on sweet corn. It pays, no matter what kind of fishing you do, to keep working at your swim. If the rigs aren't going and you're convinced this fish is still out there, try a change, swap things about a bit. You may bag a whole shed load more fish. Right, I'm not sure if you can see, but the weather has really changed for the worst. Uh, it's gonna come down in buckets in a moment. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed your video. We, we've managed to bag a fair few bream. This is just a, a, a few of the many we've caught. I hope my video has inspired you for you to go out and have a go at bream fishing yourself. This shows you how much fun you can have. Cheers, thanks for watching. Tight lines and see you on the bank really soon.